Hey guys, uh, Mr. B here again, bringing you another awesome math video. This one on a question I get a lot um, in my classes where we're doing quadratics and solving quadratics and things like that is what do I is what do you do if you get a negative underneath the square root sign in the quadratic formula? So this is a quadratic where if you do the quadratic formula, you actually end up with a negative. So let's actually work this out. So x is equal to negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. So negative negative b is 4 plus or minus square root negative 4 squared minus 4 a is 1, c is 9, all divided by 2. And then so when we work that out, we get 4 plus or minus square root. So if we look what's going to happen, we're going to get underneath the square root, we're going to have 16 minus 36. So 16 uh, minus 36 is negative 20. So we end up with a negative underneath the square root. So that's that's important to recognize when that happens, what that actually means. So let me just give, bring you to a new slide. So let me see if I can remember that. So 4 plus or minus negative 20 over 2. So what that means is that our quadratic doesn't have any real solutions. So if I were to graph my quadratic, you know, on my xy axis, it's too messy. Let me make a new one. So if I were to gra graph my quadratic on my x-y axis, and I think this guy actually has a vertex of like 2, 5, so somewhere up here somewhere. Actually, I'll just put it down here. We get the point. And it opens up, so it would look like that. So what it means is it doesn't have any real solutions, so no real solutions. So no real solutions. And no x-intercepts. So it doesn't cross the x-axis, which means it doesn't have any real solutions. But now we're still left with the problem is how do we deal with this? So what I tell my students, the easy way to deal with a negative underneath the root sign in the quadratic formula is to, to use your negative number. So the rule is um, negative, the square root of negative 1 is equal to i, which is an imaginary number. You may have seen that in class, and hopefully you have. It's not your first time seeing it. Um, so that's just defined. Just don't worry about where it comes from. Just you need to know that. Um, so when we have a negative 20, what I tell my students is rewrite this step. Get rid of the negative. So it becomes root 20. And simply tack an i outside. Don't even worry about reducing down the root or anything like that right yet. Just get rid of that negative and tack an i on the outside. So that way now we can worry, uh, worry about reducing that root 20. So, um, this is not a video on reducing a root, but I will reduce this one. Um, so, root 20, what I do is I like to think with the largest perfect square that divides into 20. So, I'm just going on my list. Um, 1, 4, 9, 16. Obviously, it's 4. So, I rewrite this as 4 times 5, which is 2 root 5, which ends up being 4 plus or minus and I put the number that's in front of my root in front of the i, so 2i root 5 all over 2. Then I can reduce this down because uh, the top two numbers are both divisible by 2, so it becomes 2 plus or minus, and 2i divided by 2 is just i root 5. So that's what I do. So if I get a negative underneath the root sign, I change it to an i, and that's it. So um, I'll just write another example. I wrote, won't write the quadratic. I'll just do uh, one like this, say. So 5 plus or minus negative 25 all over 2. So if you end up with a perfect square, so to say, we end up with like this. So 5 plus or minus. So the first step, get rid of the negative, put an i outside, just like that. I'll divide it by 2, and then we can just simply take the square root of 25, which is 5, so 5i, all divided by 2. So again, <clears throat> replace the negative with an i outside the root sign, then treat it as normal, but recognize what it means. It means no real solutions, no x-intercepts. 
All right, guys. So hopefully this video was uh, this video helped with you with your quadratic formula, and I'll talk to you guys later.